everybody should just mind themselves so it's not whenever i put a camera in front of me cars will start passing up and down <laughs> you already saw the thumbnail you saw the title of this video that is what i want to talk about okay i want to talk about a particular thing that irks me that i have observed this particular behavior or this particular action is usually targeted at people who are newly arrived in the country for those of you who are just joining here for the first time my name is Choma. welcome to the channel okay i live in australia i relocated from nigeria so yes i am talking in relation to newly arrived migrants newly arrived international students in australia and because i am nigerian obviously i am talking from that perspective as well so i don't know if this is common in other african communities here in australia but i definitely think it is common within the nigerian community okay the fact that it seems as if people have already decided what they expect you to be doing when you first arrive in the country in terms of the choices you make around employment but also long term into the career that you get into maybe this behavior is particularly targeting women or females female immigrants in particular i don't know so it might be the case that i am talking this way because i am a woman myself and i have observed this but yeah what i am talking about is for most people who are newly arrived especially if you've come in under a visa that is not employer sponsored so basically it's not like you're coming in on a visa where employment has already been set up for you and you're just coming straight to start work right so if you're coming through a visa that would require you to look for a job in my experience most people start off with casual jobs survival jobs you might want to call them right and what i have observed is that <laughs> <laughs> the gatekeepers here <laughs> and when i say gatekeepers i mean people who have been here longer than yourself okay a lot of them would start trying to talk you into making choices that you may not be happy with or try to convince you that you only have limited options and one particular option in this instance is working in the care sector please i feel like it's important at this point to make a disclaimer or a few disclaimers i don't have anything against people who are making an honest to goodness living doing honest work regardless of what the work is regardless of how other people view the job okay i have no problem with it i'm only talking about how many people seem to make it as though that is the only job you can do that is worth your time now i understand a few reasons why working in the care sector is attractive to people and attractive as a casual job so first of all the job is easy that's the truth i have worked in that sector myself i was a support worker for about five months so i know the job is relatively easy also depending on the kind of organization you find yourself in and the level of care that you are expected to give the people you're supporting okay because different organizations would be supporting different categories of residents or different categories of clients right there are some clients that are very high need and would require more involvement from you in looking after them but there are also organizations that are more focused on independent living and when I did my support worker job, I was at this organization that was independent living focused. So the goal was to support the residents to live more independently. So I was not expected to be doing things for them, but rather encouraging them to do things for themselves. Not every care organization runs on that kind of model. There are some organizations that require you to provide things like personal care, okay, um, you know, hygiene support and things like that. I didn't really have to do that in a hands-on way. So if the residents were going to shower, for instance, all I needed to do was stand at the door, make sure that they were fine and make sure that it was safe because some of these residents might be physically frail 
or they might have some kind of cognitive disability which if they are going into environments that may pose some kind of risk to them like in the bathroom where things are wet and they could slip and fall right so my job was just to stand at the door and make sure that they were fine i didn't have to personally give them a shower so yes i understand that that job can be easy some people find it really easy and depending on your personal circumstance at that moment maybe that is what you need you need a job that is easy because there's so many other things going on on the side that you're juggling at the same time so obviously you want to minimize your stress as much as possible another thing that keeps people in that job or that attracts people to that job is the pay okay even though on this one to be honest i don't think the pay is enough of a factor to not consider other types of casual jobs or survival jobs listen i worked first of all i set up my business at home and then i went on from there to work as a driver at a daycare i worked as a food delivery driver i worked as a retail assistant i worked as a support worker as i just said and let me say there wasn't any significant difference in pay of all these casual jobs that i did the job i did as a retail assistant and also as a food delivery driver paid me higher than i was being paid as a support worker you understand but with support work some people are attracted to you know weekend rates of pay and also public holidays where you're, you'll be getting um, penalty rates but that also applies to a lot of other jobs it applies even it applied even to the retail assistant job that i was doing right so on that particular point about pay i am not very much in agreement with it as a reason for anybody to want to stick to it if they do not really like that job and i would also say here if anyone if anyone is doing that job because they enjoy that kind of job then that is even the best thing to do because i believe that there are some people who genuinely enjoy that job and that is how it should be actually because this is not the kind of job that you should be going into if you're not patient if you do not have the disposition to work with people who are vulnerable right you shouldn't even have any business <laughs> considering that kind of job Anyways, before I digress too much, I just needed to make that very clear. I'm not bashing anybody. However, like I said, this is based on my experience of being compelled by so many people to go and do care work because that was what was expected when you first arrive in the country and they made it seem like that was the only option if you're coming into australia or you're newly arrived here i want you to know that it's not the only option another aspect of working in the care sector which i personally have found to be interesting is the fact that some people actually start doing these jobs with no intention of making it a career like they don't have any intention to be in it permanently but somehow they get stuck i have seen that happen over and over again they get stuck and it's like the longer you stay in that job the more difficult it will be to pull out i don't know why but i i think it it also has to do with some of the reasons i mentioned especially the ease of the job there are people who register with multiple agencies and they just keep picking shifts here and there they are working morning shifts afternoon shifts night shifts seven days a week no time to rest that is one aspect of this job that i personally when i see people who work like that it scares me a little bit okay i get worried for their sake it's so very easy to get burnt out in that job because you think it is an easy job relatively easier job where you're not exerting yourself physically too much in these jobs and so it's so easy to get tempted into thinking that you can run on autopilot so to speak where you're just doing back-to-back -back shifts and you will not be impacted physically or mentally a lot of people fall into that trap and i have heard stories about people who have broken down doing that okay so be very careful and weigh up your options this is not to say that this cannot happen in other jobs it does happen in other jobs but i feel 
why it is easy for people to get roped into this situation is that illusion around how physically easy it is. You don't even need to be too mentally involved in that job, okay, because it's very routine. What you have to do with the client has already been prescribed for you, so you're really not racking your brains around anything. So people fall into that. But another challenge I also see, or another trap I see in that is some people come into these jobs and then they lose sight of the long-term goals they had in terms of their career. And like I said, the longer you stay in it, I feel like the more stuck you become. Maybe that is what explains some of my observations of people who have been in it for so long. And even though they, they would express to you that they wish to do something else with their lives, year on year, they are still in it. In terms of survival jobs, other casual jobs you can do, there are jobs in warehousing. I have seen people who work in logistics and warehousing, or they could be working in packing, packaging um, products and things like that. Um, there are people who work in the construction industry and in the construction industry there's a wide range of different jobs you can do there um, so when you come in if you want to work in the construction industry the requirement is that you get your white card and then you can work as a laborer you can work as a forklift driver you can work as a traffic controller by the way traffic controllers make a lot of money yes <laughs> i'm just putting it out there <laughs> all right and and yeah it's not as if working in the disability or age care sector is that easy as well especially at the beginning you still have to get the certificate three or certificate four for you to be able to work in these things so yeah it's still kind of the same as getting your white card as a matter of fact you get your white card faster in the construction industry than um, your disability certificate or your age care certificate because that takes about three months and you also have to do placements mm? and then other jobs you can do would be retail assistants and retail assistants can also be quite varied because there's lots of different places you can work I worked in Maya, which is like a, a big retail departmental store here in Australia. It's quite popular. I worked in Maya, but some people find themselves working in supermarkets and you know, there's lots of jobs in the supermarkets as well, Woolworths, Coles. And then another thing I have found here is that there are so many other avenues through which you can find a job that do not necessarily involve going to the popular job sites online and applying for these jobs. When I go to my local supermarkets, Woolworths and Coles, I have found that they have a notice board section and you will see people pinning things on that board. So it might be local businesses, small local businesses just promoting their services. Sometimes you would see job adverts pinned there. Networking really does work here in Australia. In whatever setting, in whatever setting you find yourself, talk about yourself with pride. Talk about your experiences with pride. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes that is how you will get your big break. So don't come here and feel that you're only limited to the traditional approaches of doing things. You must not be online to find that job. You can find a job just by speaking to people. And this especially works for people who would like to break back into their careers. Okay, so you're a highly skilled person, you've relocated to Australia, and you're, you know, people are giving you all this talk all this side talk about how it is so hard to break back into your field granted some professions here will need you to upskill yourself and obtain an Australian qualification before you can um, get a foot in the door however you might be surprised to see that you can get a foot in the door just by speaking to people when I decided I wanted to study social work meanwhile there had been people trying to convince me to study nursing I almost succumbed to that pressure. I actually picked up an enrollment form into a nursing program. Thankfully, I didn't go through with it because I just said the truth to myself. Chioma, you can't be a nurse. You will be a, a very miserable nurse and you will likely not last in that job for more than six months, okay? <laughs> if even that, yeah? So with that, I just said the truth to myself and I was like, mm -mm, nursing is not for me. But why? Because everyone thought 
yeah once you come in and you're a female the next thing is for you to go get a nursing degree and this happens in so many other countries not only here in australia so it's a very common pathway for new immigrants right you must not also be a nurse i remember that i would tell people that i was studying social work and i had the most interesting reactions some people would go oh social work what is that what do they do <laughs> i would have people ask me hmm are you sure you will get a job as a social worker some other people would outrightly tell me to my face ha i'm not sure that you'll get a job as a social worker yes i had people who told me this social work is more popular now i would think or maybe just because i'm a social worker and i talk a lot about social work so it's beginning to look like it's very popular but i don't know to be honest but yeah it's ironic because i even spoke to social work graduates at that time and they told me how difficult it was for them to find a job now this is not me dismissing anybody's experience okay because i know when you've been privileged to achieve something you tend to become desensitized to other people's plight just because you did not struggle as much to achieve the same thing right so i am keeping that in mind but before i even graduated i got my first job as a social worker i'm talking a proper social work job my entry level salary was 64 dollars an hour okay and that was even before I had submitted my thesis for my master's program. That was when I got that job. So imagine that I had let people discourage me from the beginning saying, oh, social work is not very popular and I don't think you'll get a job or what is social work? Yeah, imagine that I had let all of that get to me. Always check back with yourself. You know yourself better than anybody else. I am not here encouraging wishful thinking, okay? I always believe that for that goal you want to achieve, you must be willing to do the necessary work. So I am not saying that uh, you do not have a qualification in a particular profession and you're just going by faith that you will get into this profession without the relevant qualifications or experience. That's not what I am talking about here, okay? I'm talking about people who are already sufficiently qualified, sufficiently experienced, and someone is trying to tell you, ah, it will be hard though, you can't get into it. At least try and know that you tried and it didn't work instead of just going by what people are saying to you. I guess the underlying message I just want to pass across before I wrap up this video is don't limit yourself and don't let anybody limit you. I hope this video has made sense at the end of the day, okay? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.